Hey, everybody. Um, so again, we're going to have to do another uh, video to go a little more into detail about uh, something in lab that we haven't really um, done too much of in class. And that is calculating um, pH using something called an ice table. And it's referred to in the uh, notes for uh, the experiment. But again, we haven't really talked about it in detail, so we're going to do that today. So this is the um, introduction to the dissociation constant, which hopefully we're somewhat familiar with now. And pretty much uh, we've been using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which right here tells us that the pH can be calculated if you know what the pKa of the weak acid is, and you can figure out what the concentration of the conjugate base and the weak acid. And for us, the weak acid is 0.5. Acetic acid, and the conjugate base is acetate. I may sometimes use AC for acetate, but same thing. So this is our weak acid, and this is our conjugate base. And so basically what we need to do is figure out what the concentration of our acid is at any particular time, and figure out what the concentration of our base is at any particular time, and we can figure out what the what the pH is okay and that's basically what they're asking um, when you do your report so let's look at um, how we're going to calculate that so here's the introduction to what we call an ice table now the ice table refers to I for initial C for what's the change when something is changed in the reaction, and then E, what happens after the change when equilibrium is reestablished? And so in the last uh, chapter, um, one of the things that you may not have uh, spent much time looking at if you didn't look at the, at the lecture was I talked a little bit about what an equilibrium really is. And an equilibrium is sort of is misunderstood by a lot of students. When they hear the term equilibrium, they think that means that everything is at the same concentration. And that isn't the case. What equilibrium means is that the concentration of reactants and products don't change over time. Um, it doesn't mean that they're the same. You could have a lot more reactant or you could have a lot more product. And we know with this weak acid, this is our weak acid, acetic acid, we know that that doesn't ionize much. Um, in fact, the K, the Ka, the equilibrium constant for this acid, which is the product of the two products, the concentration of the two products, you multiply those together, and you divide them by the concentration of the acetic acid. So it's the concentration of H plus times the concentration of acetate, and you divide that by the concentration of the acid itself. And that's really small. It's a really small number. It's around 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. That means that this forward reaction where, come on, that means this forward reaction where product is made, H plus an acetate ion, doesn't, isn't really favored because we don't make that much product. What is favored is the reverse reaction. If we have any H plus and acetate 
in solution, they're much more likely to go recombine and make more acetic acid than the other way. There's a little bit of H plus um, formed and a little bit of acetate formed, but not very much. So usually the concentration of acetate is much higher than the concentration of H plus and acetate in solution. Now, this equilibrium is going to be disturbed when we add anything new to it. If we add more um, acid, if we add more H plus, what's going to happen to this reaction? Well, if we add more product, if we add more of this, that pushes the reaction backwards. So if the concentration of H plus goes up because we've added a strong acid, that pushes this reaction back towards making more acetic acid. And then the concentration of H plus goes back down because that is where the normal equilibrium is, low concentration of H plus. So if we artificially increase up the concentration of H plus, this reaction will move backwards to lower it again. Now, what happens if we add strong base? We have to look at what that reaction is. So let's look at what it is. So if we add strong base to this reaction, so that would be acetic acid plus strong base or hydroxide, what does that make? Well, it makes acetate ion. And what's the other product? The other product is water. Because that's what you get with an acid uh, base neutralization reaction. We have a weak acid and a strong base. The strong base is going to take that proton and pop it right off the acetic acid and leave acetate ion. And the other product is going to be water. Well, what does that do? That basically means that we have lowered the concentration of acid and we have increased the concentration of acetate. So again, that's going to force the reaction to go backwards and try and reestablish that equilibrium between a low concentration of acetate and a higher concentration of acid. So in each, um, either adding the strong acid or the strong base, this reaction is going to try and re-equilibrate um, itself to make more of uh, the weak acid, thereby keeping the pH approximately what it was before. So what we need to do to figure out um, the question of what happens when we add hydroxide is to use this table. We figure out what the concentration of acetic acid was at the beginning, what the initial concentration was. We try and figure out what's the change in the concentration of, of um, acetic acid H plus and the concentration of um, acetate ion. And then reestablish what happens at equilibrium when these things, when these changes take place. So let's go through that. So here's the question. And this refers to the second um, experiment we did last night when we took the pH. 4.7 buffer and then diluted it. So we put two mils of buffer in each well and we want to calculate the final pH, the final pH 
oops, not a good color. The final pH of the undiluted buffer after a quarter of a mil, like very small amount, that's basically what we're using for a drop, 0.25 mils. A 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide is added. They give you the Ka, and we have need to figure out what the buffer concentrations were. So, if you remember, for the pH 4.7 buffer, we added equal volumes of, let's change that color, 0.1 molar acetic acid and 0.1 molar acetate ion, sodium acetate. But since it completely dissociates, we get sodium and we get acetate. Sodium is going to be a spectator ion. So we added equal volumes of that. So what are the final concentrations? Well, if I have 100 millimolar acetic acid and I add an equal volume of something else, then I've lowered that concentration by a factor of two. So my final concentration is 50 millimolar acetic acid and 50 millimolar acetate ion. Those are my initial, so that's the I in the ice. That's my initial concentrations. So then we add 0 0.25 milliliters of hydroxide. What is the um, concentration of hydroxide? Well, we see that it's 0.1 molar. So how many moles is that? That is 0 0.25 mils times 0 0.1 molar or let's convert everything to liters and moles so we can get a, an actual uh, number since molarity is in moles per liter 0.25 ml that is 0 0.00025 liters that's a really small number times 0 0.1 moles per liter. How many moles is that? Not a lot. So 0 0.000025. Again, we're dealing with really, really small numbers here. So that's not a terribly large amount of base, but we're dealing with really, really small volumes here too. So the changes could be dramatic. Next, we need to figure out how many moles of acetate and how many moles of acetic acid were present at zero time. So let's figure that part out. So here we have 50 millimolar acetate and 50 millimolar acetic acid, and they're both in two mils. So that is 0 0.050 moles per liter. And how many liters is that? Again, not a lot. 0 0.002 liters. That's two mils. So we have a total of 0 0.00 zero one moles and that's going to be true for both of them because they have the same concentration so we have the same number of moles of acetic acid and acetate ion same number of moles of both of them okay so we've established what the conditions are at the beginning, that's how many moles of both acetic acid and acetate we have. 
Now we got to figure out what the change is going to be. So let's erase some of this stuff. So let's look at what the reaction is again, because that will tell us um, what the changes are we need to make. So again, the reaction is acetic acid plus hydroxide ion make water and acetate ion. So some of you may be wondering, hey, you didn't calculate the concentration of H+. That's one of the products when um, um, acetic acid is, is dissociated. Yes, but the Ka is so small, 10 to the minus 5, and these concentrations are so small that the concentration of H plus is basically so small that it doesn't matter. So when we add the hydroxide, the hydroxide is going to be there in such higher concentration that all of that H plus is basically just going to be disappeared. And, and so whatever H plus um, is going to be there at the end is going to be due to this equilibrium reaction because all the initial H plus was just num, 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 uh, sopped up by the hydroxide ion. So that's why we don't really consider it because the concentration of it is super, super, super low. So it doesn't really matter. So that this is the reaction. So for every mole of hydroxide we add, we're going to make a mole of acetate ion and we're going to consume a mole of acetic acid. So the original number of moles of acid and base were 0 0.0010 moles. Or did I leave a zero out there? Well, another zero. So basically 1 times 10 to the minus 4 for both. And what's going to happen when we add hydroxide? Hydroxide is going to go up by 0.0000025 moles. Well, what's that going to do? That's going to decrease that amount from the acid and it's going to increase that amount of acetate. And the new number of moles of acetate will be that much higher. So now what are we left with? So the amount of acetic acid goes down and we're left with Again, really a small number. 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, and all of the hydroxide gets consumed. So it is gone. So now this is what the new equilibrium is going to be. The new equilibrium that's been established is that acetic acid is now lower concentration and the acetate is higher. So now we have to reestablish a new equilibrium. The equilibrium of that reaction, again, is acid, H plus, and acetate. So now we have new concentrations of the acid and a new concentration of acetate. So how do we figure out what the pH is? And that's where our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation comes to the rescue. Because you remember 
That tells us we can calculate the pH if we know two things. Well, three things, really. One being, do we know what the pKa is? Yes, we do. Do we know what the um, concentrations of the conjugate base and the weak acid are? Yeah, we do now. So now we can calculate what the pH is. So again, a lot of stuff here. Let's, let's erase it. So Henderson-Hasselbach equation, again, is pH equals the pKa plus the log of the conjugate base. And so for us, that would be acetate divided by the concentration of the weak acid. And so what I'm going to do is just put in the number of moles that we just calculated. I don't need the concentration. Why? Because moles, the concentration is just moles over liters. So if I divide moles over liters by moles over liters, if my liters are the same, they just cancel out. And it's just a ratio of moles to moles. So I don't really need to calculate the, the, the concentration. So I can just use moles. And so since I have the moles, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use the number of moles of acetate and acid that we just calculated a minute ago. And so the number of moles of, of acetate was 0 0.00125 and the number of moles of acid was 0 0.000075. And that ratio is 1.667. So to get the pH, we need the pKa plus the log of 1.667. Well, the log of 1.667 is 0 0.2217. So basically 10 to the 0 0.2217th power equals 1.667. The pKa is 4.75 for acetic acid. And so when we subtract 0 0.2217 from each side, we get a pH of 4.25, oh, 5.2, sorry. Damn dyslexia keeps. 5.281. So use our three significant digits and 4.53. So you can see that's why the pH didn't change very much. When we had the um, concentrated buffer at 4.7 and we added hydroxide to it, the color didn't change, did it? No. And we wouldn't have expected it to because the pH only went from 4.7 down to 4.5, which isn't really enough uh, to change the color very much. And so we didn't really see a change of color. So that's the answer for that question. Now there's another one that asks, what's the final pH when you, when you have the second dilution? So you remember we did three, three dilutions, right? We took the original buffer, we diluted it by four, and then we diluted it by four again, and then we diluted it by four again. So the second dilution basically would be taking the concentrations, which were 50 millimolar acid and 50 millimolar base, conjugate base, and diluting them by a factor of 16. 
So diluting it by four, and then diluting it by four again. So one quarter times one quarter is one over 16. So that reduces those um, concentrations way down. Now they're only 3.1 millimolar each. And it also, so also reduces the number of moles of each by 16. So if we look at how much um, we had before, we had 0 0.0001 moles of each one. Now we have 16 times less. So now our original concentrations are Again, really super small numbers here. May help you to have a scientific calculator. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, five. So in other words, 6.25 times 10 to the minus six moles of both acetate and um, acetic acid. So we're adding the one drop and we're assuming it would have been nice if um, we included how much volume that is. I think we're, we're still using the assumption that one drop is 0 0.25 mils. So we're adding the same amount of sodium hydroxide we did last time. And the amount of sodium hydroxide we added last time was 0 0.000025 moles. So now you can see, and that is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 moles. So we have that many moles of hydroxide. We have this many moles of acid. We have more strong base than we do weak acid. What do we do now? Well, basically this means all of that hydroxide, all of that weak acid is going to be consumed. So there won't be any weak acid left. And we're now going to have leftover hydroxide. How much leftover hydroxide? Well, it's going to be this much subtracting that much. So let's calculate how much that is. So now we have the situation where we have more hydroxide than we do weak acid. So now our equilibrium is gone because we no longer have any more weak acid. All we have now is acetate ion and hydroxide. So we have a weak uh, base and a strong base. So basically the pH is just gonna be determined by how much strong base is now present. How much strong base is present? This much. So what is how many moles of hydroxide are going to be left over? And again, small number. So 0 0.1234.1875 moles. And now we're actually going to need to figure out what the concentration is. Because for pH, we know the pH is minus log concentration of H plus. Well, we need to figure out what the concentration of OH minus is to figure that out. Why is that? Think about that for a minute. So let's figure out what the concentration of hydroxide is. We have that many moles of it. What's our volume? So we have two mils of the original base and we added 0 0.25 mils of hydroxide. So this is our total volume. 2.25 mils. So if I convert that to liters, 0 
0.225 liters. Again, super, super small. Did I put too many? Too many zeros in there. Oops. Here we go. One, two, three. Yep. Two zeros. So what is the concentration? The concentration is 0 0.00833 molar hydroxide. So that is the concentration of hydroxide. How are we going to use that to figure out what the pH is? Because the pH is the concentration of H+, plus, not the concentration of OH-. minus. Ah, but remember that there is yet another equilibrium going on. What's the other equilibrium? The equilibrium that's going on is the equilibrium of water. So let's erase some of this stuff and do that part. So I'd no longer have an equilibrium with acetate and um, acetic acid because there ain't no more acetic acid. It's all gone. But I still have another equilibrium. And that equilibrium is the equilibrium of water dissociation, where water dissociates into H plus and OH minus. And we know that the equilibrium of that, called Kw, is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. That means at any time in water, under any circumstances, if I multiply the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus, I get 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So the concentration of H plus, come on, hey, <laughs> it does not like writing there for some reason. So if my concentration of H plus, come on, times the concentration of OH minus is equal to 10 to the minus 14. Well, I know what my concentration of OH minus is. Remember, we just calculated it. It's 0 0.00833 molar. So the concentration of H plus is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divide it by 0 0.00833. What is that? That number is 1.20 times 10 to the minus 12. So this is my concentration of H plus. So now, all you have to do is get the negative log of this, and that will give you the pH, okay? Because remember, pH pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of H+. Plus. And the answer for ours is going to be minus log 1.2 times 10 to the minus 12. Man, looking grim. So all you need to do to solve that is get the minus log of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 12, and you'll have your answer. Okay. Have a great weekend, and uh, I'll post this as soon as the, my internet is back up. All right, bye-bye.